Hi everyone! Today is gonna be a world video. You see I'm standing here, Belgian guy, wearing a NACFA t-shirt from Germany, shoes and jeans made by American companies, and I'll be reviewing a Russian film with a Japanese camera. Let's get cracking! The idea for the review of this film is from a good friend of mine and he asked me if I was familiar with Russian films and I was not. I used uh, some Eastern European films like Foma and lesser known Orvo and Wifota. I never used a Russian film. I know they existed like Tasma or Zvema but then I saw this Silbera film the Pan 160. So I got one. I always got a thing for lone trees like that, so it's gonna be our first shot. Now this is the point of view I want to capture onto film. I'm gonna use a 28 millimeter lens with no filter for the first shot. And sorry guys, you won't see this picture. You see my 28 millimeter died. The diaphragm was stuck fully open so the image was totally overexposed thankfully i used my 50 mil most of the time and we'll see some results hmm. finally away from the road just look at that isn't this beautiful i really like the look of the highlights on here but this next image really steals the show it's dreamy i would say i like that so here we are in belgium again we are on a kind of a semi-lockdown. Restaurants and hair salons are closed. That's the reason of my Yee-Yee's haircut of mine. That doesn't look too great, but these are automotive tires abandoned. I'm gonna go through the thorn bushes and take a picture. I hope they will look fine. And they certainly did. On this first example, I pumped up the contrast a little and it looks just awesome. I like contrasty images like this, especially with textures. And on this next one, the image was uh, a little tad softer, but still plenty of details. That's pretty cool. Note to self, toms and no socks are not suitable shoes for thorny bushes. Maybe that's what they meant when they said you had to sacrifice yourself for your art. Oh wait, that looks good. The problem with this type of film is I have no idea how it will behave for contrasted scenes. Right behind me are the windmills and right over there, no windmills, just fields. Let's take some shots. I was afraid this film would be grainy and I was kind of right, but that's nothing to worry about. The images are grainy and I would say gritty, they have some personality and after all, if you are looking for a clean film with no rain at all, just buy some Kodak T-Max 100 and you'll be fine. This film has some guts, some personality and some people may like that, just like I do. So once again, we are on this pedestrian road and if you can hear it, it gives me some RDR2 vibes. It's okay, boy. Look at this one. Let's take a shot. A scene like this is tricky for a camera. Even the video camera is struggling to expose it correctly. So, let's see how the Selbera film handles this situation, shall we? And it doesn't look too bad, I mean. The light source, the sun, was on the axis of the lens and it's always tricky to get good results in situations like this. So, yeah, pretty satisfied. And here we are. That's the place I wanted to show you and, yeah, the stony bushes. Should I go down there? I think I should. Ow. Ow. 
Now, this is an old pedestrian bridge, and uh, we had stairs down there with uh, thorny bushes. I'm gonna take some pictures of it. The reason I put myself in great pain going down there was to take this picture and to show you how the film was capable to retain information in the shadows while not really overblowing the highlights. The highlights are overblown on this first picture, but just a few masking under the enlarger will fix the problem and uh, this is a side-by-side -side comparison. Yep, pretty good result, I mean. I guess that's what we can call the globalized economy. My shoes are an American brand, but they're made in China. My jeans are made in Bangladesh. And this silver film is made in Belgium. Go figure. Well, now let's go back home and process this film and look at the results. And on my way back to the car, I made this shot and I really wanted to share it with you because it looks so eerie. Here's a crop section of it and it looks like it has a, almost an infrared effect. Although I didn't use any infrared film to take this shot and it's probably due to the fact that this film has an extended sensibility into the near infrared spectrum. And then I found this. Exploded balloon. Looks like somebody had fun with a CO2 pistol. Welcome back. I picked up the trash. These guys left over there with uh, this CO2 canister for pistols, I guess. And uh, well, and now the moment we've all been waiting for. My final thoughts on the Silbera Pan 160. I think it has an interesting look. It gives this like eerie glow to the highlights. It's very pleasant. It's also kind of grainy. I would say it has some grit. If you are looking for clean images with no grain, well, just go buy a Kodak T-Max or an Ilford Delta 100. These films are clean as a whistle. That film, it has personality. I really enjoy the look and I don't think the stairs showed the full potential of this film. And that's the reason why I'm gonna order some of them Next time, I got mine at retrocamera.be for $6.95, which is not too much of a price. We are in the same price bracket as a FP4 and an HP5. So, yeah, I'll definitely try it again. That's it for today. As always, thanks for watching and catch you next time. Goodbye. Yeah, sorry about this.